Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while since I posted something. I had, uh, you know, busy at work and doing other things besides this. Um, also, the last video I noticed, I don't know if you noticed, but I ran into a problem with the, uh, the driver's side door. And I'm trying to pick this up and show you. It's pretty heavy. Remember, I had an issue with my driver's side door. It wasn't closing. You know, but I had to make some adjustments, and now it's and now it's closing properly. I'll, when I put the camera in the overhead, uh, I'll show you better. But uh, but yeah, I got to get this um, Dodge Charger done. We're so close to the finish line. Um, I would like to get it done, so I'm going to do a few stages right now, depending on the time. Um, we'll see how many stages we could get through. Okay. Okay, we are on issue 95. I forgot there for a second. But let me pull this uh, car up. So remember, the door was popping open. It was like pop and then pop out. So I had to make some adjustments, and I got that. Um, this is no... Toyota, Lexus, the body lines aren't going to be perfect. That's just what you pay for with an American car. Um, but uh, compared to the other side, it looks pretty even. You know, so both doors work. This one works a little better than this side. But um, I'm happy with it now. So it should be okay. Issue 95, here is the uh, magazine. A little article about Letty again. It goes into John Brotherton. Uh, Dodge Intrepid. You remember this car? That that was a, uh, a groundbreaking, groundbreaking car. They redesigned it and went away from the K-frame and just kind of like reinvented how cars would be made I think it was the first car with the cab forward design where you got a shorter hood you got a bigger dash and the cars and the wheels are up forward more so you don't have a big overhang of the hood so that's pretty cool but um, it was like a pretty much a concept car so it didn't last very long all right so this issue we are Working on the left front wing, and then we will attach this to the body panel. So let me get our parts ready. So in this issue, the the screws are on the outside. So when I pulled this out of the bag, these fell out. Usually they're on the inside, but this time they weren't. Just be careful. Make sure you uh, have all your pieces. You know, check. Make sure you got everything before you proceed. So on this one, we're just going to install the uh, the lenses. Okay. So we take a lens from our previous issue. Looks like so. Let's flip this around. Let's get some cushion down here so we don't scratch the paint. Okay. Indicator lens goes in, and then we have a retainer. It goes on like so and then we use uh, some CM screws to secure it okay so get continue on here let's uh, get the other one started and then we'll tighten it up and then we are going to install this onto the body. Um, and we're going to be using, I think, the FM screws for that. Okay, so now let's grip it properly so we don't strip it out. And you screw bottoms out, just stop. No more twisting. Don't want to strip out the stud, the post. Okay, so now let's uh, move this to the side real quick. And we're going 
going to bring in our car body. So it looks like we got one, two, three, four, four posts. And we're gonna install this. Just like so. And you can only go on one way. Just following the body lines. Okay, now we gotta flip this over and um, start screwing it in. Okay, here we go, four screws we're installing. And one, just kind of get these started and then we'll do the final torque at the end. Because like, it's kind of awkward. If you got smaller hands and arms and you could get your hand in here, you could manipulate this better. But if, but if not, then you have to try something different to make it work without damaging anything. Okay, I tightened the three off, off uh, camera, and this is the fourth one. Okay. Hey, anybody who has suggestions on how to polish and make the shine come out in the paint on these type of models you know i got fingerprints all over these um there's some fa factory residue i just almost broke my door all right uh, so there's like factory residue um so tell me what product would you use because honestly i don't know um that'll make it That'll clean this up really well once I'm finished. All right, so we got our front fender on here. And we're gonna move on to stage 96. All right, y'all, go back with stage 96. This is gonna be a, a kind of a exact duplicate of what we just did, stage 95. But let's first go through the magazine. The Eagle Speedster. That looks like a, it's a Jaguar Type S E-Type really nice looking that's the luxury car right there or as they would say in England the Jaguar oh the good old Dodge Caravan MK3 um, from 96 to 2000 I had one of those when all my kids were young it was a great car I loved it mine was the Plymouth though same difference and then as always, um, you guys check out your magazine that you get if you decide to sign up for this uh, model, is we have uh, tuning information at the back. So for, car, for regular cars and for uh, sports cars or racers or whatever you want to call it. All right, so moving along, we have our right fender. We're gonna put the lens on. Get our lens, goes in there. And we get our cover. Okay. All right. So just install it like so. Let's get some torque on here. All right, and now we're gonna install this fender onto the body. So we have our lens right there. Okay, stand by.
This ain't good. So I was right about one thing that uh, I wasn't cutting it with my right hand. So I had to go to my left hand, so I had to go to my right hand. And as you can see, uh, this fender did not line up at all. And so, Hopefully that doesn't cause an issue in the future with the hood because you can see here there's less space here than there is here. I could just tell that with my naked eye here. And um, let's hope for the best, okay? I should have paused that, but I didn't. So we'll move on to the next issue. All right, we're back with issue 97. Here's the magazine. I start off with a nice article. It's something special. Fans demonstrated their unconditional love for the Fast and Furious franchise once again when the seventh movie was released. It became one of the biggest box office smashes of all time. Determined not to let their fans down, the production team prepared to give their all in Fate of the Furious. And that's where they debuted this charger. They call it the uh, Dodge Ice Charger when they used the snows of uh, Iceland. Gary Gray um, was the director. And for the throwback history, we got the Dodge Durango SRT. Interesting. I heard it's pretty fast. I see some YouTube videos on it. Okay. All right, so now we got a bunch of little uh, minor details here. Um, we're gonna work on the windshield. We're gonna work on the uh, the wiper arms and blades, and then the uh, and then the, what you call it the safety latches for the uh, the hood. So. It looks like these wiper blades, they're identical, so it doesn't really matter what's left or right. And they're not marked, but let me verify that these are exactly the same. And they appear to be, so we need that. We need our two wiper blades. this piece and we're going to need two of these and the rest will be installed at a later issue and we need some RM screws now the wiper blades just uh, and some CM screws and the wiper blades just press fit into 
the uh, front of the uh, the car. Let's see. Without breaking this, we are going to. So this kind of like fits over. Like so, that way you get that movement this way. And then as well as, you know, your wiping movement. It just kind of like cups, there's like two pins sticking out on either side. And this cups over them. Yeah, they lock into place. And now we're going to install this on the front. Let me press into place. Like that. And then uh, you can move them whichever direction you want. But kind of like make them even. going to move on to the next the next uh, part of this build oh my fingers there we go that one's a lot more tighter. Make sure they're all the way seated. And then you just do like that. I don't know if you can see it, but this front engine housing panel, it's got a pre-installed sticker right here. And I'm trying to uh, read it. Get my magnifying glass here. MSD MSD Pro Billet Chrysler Part Number Carb Executive Order A lot of little details on that That's pretty cool Makes it look really authentic Okay, and then we have the Engine, uh, I mean the the two safety latches they got a hexon hexagonal hexagonal base to them and then we just install them right there let's install the second one I got to use pressure because I don't want it to spin on me so there so we have that and now we take this piece, the forward engine housing, and install it right here. Okay, and now we're going to use some RM screws to secure it. You can see that these are some really small countersunk screws. And they just go right through the top and secure this forward brace. That's one. I got them all started already. And just tightening them up. Two. Three. And four. All right, let's move on to issue uh, 98. All right, we got issue 98. That's what it looks like. We got Connor Rhodes, a merciless henchman article. Christopher, Christopher Hivju, Hivju. And then um, Dodge History, the Dodge Magnum 2005 model. That also, I remember, being a uh, P-51 
pivotal sort of vehicle, something different. It was like bringing back the station wagon. It wasn't really a hit because people were buying the SUVs, you know, because there was more room in the SUVs. You could, uh, kids could like stand up in there in the back. An adult could like semi stand up, you know, so I think that was more popular. All right, in this issue, we got the, the trunk and um, and the trunk hinges, but they said, put this aside, we're not doing anything with that. What we're gonna be working on is the hood. So the hood we got back way back in issue number one. Let me pull it out of my box here. That's it right here. And we are going to be attaching the, uh, the latch to the hood. So in issue number one, they had us attach this piece to the hood. This is metal, this is plastic. And now they want me to remove it all so I can install the hood latch right here. I can't do that with this attached because I got to get a screw behind there. So I'll be right back. Okay, we removed the nine screws. We attached our hood latch. And now we just got to secure it. And then, that's all we got. I don't know why they just didn't know. Uh, why they made us do it anyway. I guess back then you were excited to have your, uh, your new, uh, new model first issue. They had you actually do something. They didn't tell you you're gonna be undoing it. I guess just to keep your excitement up. All right, so now let me reinstall all these nine screws and then we're going to install um, this uh, cross member right here. So let's get going. All right, I got eight screws in and here's the ninth one. Okay, now they want to install this cross member, which we'll do. Get some more AM screws. Okay. Like it goes right there, just like that. Let's do this. I like to get everything started first before tightening up. One. Two. And three. All right, so I finished tightening everything off camera. So now the last step for this stage we flip the hood back over and we're going to be installing uh, these indicators. So let me get my uh, sharp little nippers here, cut these off. Clean up the edges if you need to. I'm gonna get something a little sharper and I'll clean those up. Okay, I've never seen this before. Indicators that go into the hood. And then we're gonna secure these with some uh, MP screws. Got one ready. Just be careful, you're going in the plastic. Put a lot of pressure on your forefinger so it doesn't pop out and don't over tighten. Okay, the second one, Just drop it in place there, get your screw ready, and this will take care of issue 98. And I'll be right back with uh, issue 99. Just finishing this one up, and that's that. Thank you for watching. I'll be right back. 
Alrighty, issue 99. Looks like this. Fast and Furious had a lot of fights. So here is a uh, article on all the best fights. Hobbs truck, that was pretty cool. It was like a big snow plow. And then we have the Dodge Dynasty 1988 model. Nice luxury car, I liked it. All right, and then this issue, we have a bunch of little pieces. It's interesting to see where this all goes. Some springs, some brackets. Okay, we have uh, reinforcement hinges. Uh, this is a lot of reinforcements for the trunk hinge. And um, springs and washers. Okay, let's get going here. We are going to need... Alright, so make sure you... You find your parts that say left and right um, according to the instructions. So I have my left, uh, what do you call this? Trunk hinge reinforcement. We take a washer, we slide it on. And then we're gonna take one of these springs. These are for tiny springs. These are really, really Strong. I could barely compress that watch when I try and compress it Look at the the indents it leaves in my skin. That's how strong it is Okay, and then We have to put another spring on and Then take the actual hinge from the last issue we didn't use this goes on here and we install this screw. So I'm going to try and just start it, a few threads. Okay. And then let's see if this compresses. Gotta really hold on to this tight. Let's screw this in. See, I don't even know if it's down all the way. The stuff is so hard. I don't know how if it could go more. I think it can. So I'm gonna try something and and then I'll be right back. Okay, before, they want me to flip the car over and install that uh, on the inside of the trunk area, but I just wanna flip the car over once. Uh, so let me assemble the right side and do them both together. So washer, spring, washer. Now get the right side hinge. This goes on like so. And we're going to just start it without trying to compress it at all. It goes on like that. And now we're going to tighten this one too. Okay, we have uh, left and right hinges for the trunk sitting right here. So now let's flip over the vehicle and install these. Okay, can you guys see that? So we have our left hinge, which goes just like that. And, uh, I need a bigger workstation. <laughs> I like uh, World of Wings workstation he's got one of these really big uh mats and then he's got like a nice camera set up man i wish i knew how to do all that that'd be cool um i don't know all the secrets yet of youtubing 
but let me get these guys installed. And be right back. All right, just tightening the last one. So I did the left side and the right side. Just trying to be careful of this uh, fuel tube right here. So you can see they're both done. Here are the hinges that opens the hood in the trunk. And that is the next step. So after that, we are going to install You have to insert two lock pins first. Okay, that are the, that's these guys here. So, it's like that's the left. This is the right. Yeah. Let me uh, take a close up look and see how these guys go. Okay, it's a little too much to show that on camera, but it's just these two plastic pieces, they call them lock pins, and they just fit into this uh, hinge just like that. So now we're going to take how many AM screws we need, like uh, four? Yep. I guess we'll install the uh, the trunk lining later on, but they just want us to attach these hinges here so we'll move these down and i'll get those installed okay so i got the hood on and we're going to flip this over in a second here make sure that uh it looks good it's lining up closing and my reaction is going to be your reaction. See how good this turned out. You got to be careful of things. See, like I got the, the rear view mirror stuff. Just be careful where you place your hands and everything you touch. All right. So, okay. Looks like we got decent body lines here. And the hood opens. And closes. Open, closes. Awesome. All right, let's move on to stage 100. All right, we're back with issue 100. There was one piece left, and that's this guy. But we're going to be installing it on this issue. Okay. Well, let's go through the uh, magazine. Magdalene Shaw, protective mother. Hmm. Okay, Dodge History, the 1970s Dodge Demon 340. Pretty cool car. That's what they came back with this time. And so on this stage, like I said, we're gonna install that trunk liner on this stage and finish up the rear end there. Okay, first up, we're gonna install some safety latches. It has safety latches just like the hood would. Uh, it does not really like close, I guess. I'm calling it safety latch, cause um, because what you call it? They need it to adult, or, you know. A backup in case the latch fails the hood and the trunk won't fly open okay they want me to install these but they're not really like staying in place this is ridiculous hmm interesting let me try something This 
supposed to like just fit there nice and snug so that way we can install this liner on the trunk and then and then this locks it in place yeah just uh it's just so small i couldn't get a good grip with my fingertips so i'm using uh my uh needle nose I'm not gripping where the holes are because the latches got to fit through them holes. So, there. I'll do like that. Turn them 90 degrees. All right. So now I got to flip the car over at the same time. Um, install this oh wait let me finish this guy the piece from last issue goes here nope the other side be careful these don't fall out okay so now i gotta install what screws here my op screws okay so i got the uh trunk lock housing onto the uh, the inner trunk liner just a little snug okay so now here comes the uh, the acrobats hold on all right you guys watching here okay so I have my trunk open I have the inner door liner now those two pieces I pressed in there it's got to go through the holes in the trunk and then I have to line up everything and install it install nine of these ap screws or am screws let's get the first one so the thing doesn't come out on me and now let me finish this up okay all right this is my ninth screw i have surprised everything lined up even this last one uh, but it's not final torque yet so that's what i gotta do okay guys so here's our reaction now that we have that uh that bracket in there it should catch the latch right here so let's give it a try it won't Oh, you got there's a button you got to push right here. Give it some space. There you go. Oh, that fits really nice. And the last thing we have to do, oh, everything I add to this vehicle it makes it heavier and heavier. <laughs> are these uh are these latches here? So let's open this up. Oh wait, I have uh, still to do is, let's open this up. So you push the button and then, come on. The door pops up. Now we have to install these, um, what are we crawling? These fit right inside these holes inside here. I guess that's to keep like a, a little bit of distance so they don't, uh, the hood doesn't close too far down, I guess. I don't know if you're gonna be seeing this. Okay, so I got those on. You really can't see them. They're like pads for the uh, the latches here. And now I have these safety rings, just like that. If you can see that. They snap onto these posts. 
as a backup measure so the hood doesn't trunk doesn't fly open so let's see if we could uh, manipulate this into place have to be careful because I don't want to scratch the paint but you just gotta you know push it in it's like that and there you have it so let me grab something and you can see the latches are in so that's simulating like the actual real thing in real life um, which will prevent the uh, the hood from popping open okay all right we're up to issue 101 I know the video is a little long but let's uh, finish this uh, package stage 9 not stage 9 uh, but package 9 and then we'll get into package 10 and that'll be done that'll be just um uh what is it like eight more issues after that so here is the magazine and the 1996 dodge uh space car and we are sticking with the uh, trunk we're actually going to work continue working on the trunk and we have a uh, trunk panels, upper and lower. So this goes like this. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, okay, it goes like on a tilt, just like that. All right, so we're gonna secure this with CP screws. So we got that installed, and now we gotta attach this to the underside. And it goes in right here. And we need some FM screws. Uh, so three FM screws here. attach these hinge brackets using uh, CM screws let's get these ready so we got a left and right says R on it so we got to get the L a little bit tricky here I guess it goes on just like that and let's secure it and now we just install the right one and then that'll be it for uh, issue 101 so we got this one going in. I'm not sure what is the reason for these brackets but um, we're going to install them nonetheless and we'll go on to issue 102 and then stop this video and film the last video for this build okay issue 102 hopefully I think this closes out the um, the rear section of the vehicle so once again uh, fast and furious in Havana Cuba okay 
And then our history dodges the Dodge Phoenix. Manufactured between 60 and 72. Those are pretty good looking cars. I like them. I just old school like that. Like all of these old body lines and stuff. Nowadays everything just looks like a soap bar. A bar of soap. So here we go. We are going to work on the license plate and bumper. And then we're going to start a brand new video finishing out uh, stage or package number 10 or 11, whichever the case may be. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to do the license plate first. 2JRI424. So it goes on like so. And we got our nice shiny bumper. Now we are going to bring the car body over. Let's slide this over without scratching the paint. I'll keep it on my towel here. Now we're gonna use five screws to install this bumper. We gotta get it lined up, get it in these holes. And there we have it. Okay, so this closes out. I just got one more screw to tighten up. All right, this closes out, I believe, uh, package nine and up to stage 102. And we just got a few stages left. So come watch this video if you like this build go to fanhome.com sign up yourself and then uh, enjoy the fun i recommend you guys um, sign up for the start out with the ones that you could finish in 12 months instead of the two-year ones and i think the two-year ones are like newer models that that maybe they don't have all the stages for yet and maybe they're still in the manufacturing phases and so they may not have them in stock that's why they are sp spreading out the subscription over like two years so that way they have time to get all the parts in all the stages and pieces you know so like with this one my r2d2 the Millennium Falcon, um, you could complete these in 12 months. Which, you know, which I prefer. That way, uh, you know, you don't get tired or bored with it. You know, you always have a lot to do every month. Before, when I was doing the R2-D2 under the two-year plan, you get four stages, and my gosh, you know, you do that real quick, and you like twiddling your thumbs for a month uh, waiting for your next package so all right guys thanks for watching as always i appreciate uh your viewership your support um, please like and share subscribe if you haven't and uh i'll see you on the next video